Good afternoon, welcome to the last domestic football match to be played in England this season. Welcome to our live coverage from Wembley Stadium. It's a Division 1 playoff final between Charlton Athletic and Sunderland. The prize to the winners is a place in the Premier League next season. The losers will trudge home and contemplate another season in the nationwide first division. Currently, the two squads are being introduced to Brian Davis, the chief executive of the Nationwide Building Society. But it's already certain one record will fall this afternoon. That's the attendance record for a Division One playoff final. The record is 73,000. But today, there's a capacity crowd close to 80,000 to see this much anticipated game. few problems scoring goals, Charlton are on a long and beaten run, something has to give, and if necessary the final promotion place could be decided after extra time and even penalties. Remember Nottingham Forest and Middlesbrough have been promoted automatically, who will join them here from Wembley this afternoon? So on to the team news, and Charlton Athletic have resisted the temptation of recalling John Robinson who's only just recovered from a hairline fracture of his leg so Neil Heaney currently on loan from Manchester City takes his place on the left hand side of midfield he wears number 11 and it's a day of mixed emotions for Clive Mendonca number 10 the Charlton striker and a boyhood Sunderland fan it's the starting 11 everyone expected from Sunderland including 34 goal Kevin Phillips number 10 and his strike partner, Niall Quinn, now 31 years old. Sunderland, like Charlton, employ a 4-4-2 formation with former Manchester City winger Nicky Sinnerby playing wide on the right, Alan Johnston, born in Glasgow, wide on the left, and Lee Clark and Kevin Ball between them, that's their midfield. Well, the uh, allocation of tickets for Sunderland was 40,000. They were snapped up instantly. Indeed, the one or two disturbances when Sunderland put the tickets on sale for this playoff final. It's a bank holiday Monday in England, so no work for the uh, two sets of fans to worry about today. And the roads leading to Wembley from the north of the country down the A1 and the M1 have been clogged with coaches and cars all festooned in red and white to signal Sunderland were looking for a quick return to the Premier League. Remember, they were relegated at the end of last season. Charlton had to wait a bit longer. They are effectively the underdogs. They didn't have a spell in the old First Division in the 1980s between 86 and 90, but have been away from the big time for eight years now. They have... Uh, had their problems, most notably the fact they had to play away from the ground, the valley, for so many seasons, but they went back there and have built fastidiously in the last few years, and their hopes now have roller-coasted on towards a threshold of the big time once again. Well, this ground, I'm sure, wasn't any fuller for the FA Cup final a few weeks ago when Sunderland's neighbours Newcastle were here. Indeed, it hasn't been a great season for the teams from the North East. Newcastle have lost here, Middlesbrough have lost here, even in the FA Vars, Town Law have lost here. So uh, Sunderland having to correct that and for the first time this season register a North East win at Wembley Stadium. 
So much has been made of Sunderland's prolific striker, Kevin Phillips, the nationwide player of the year. 34 goals for him. His partnership with Niall Quinn, number nine, just uh, standing at the bottom of, of the centre circle, has been most prolific. It's Sunderland will be playing in their changed jerseys of yellow with navy blue shorts playing from right to left in the first half and it'll be Charlton Athletic to get this playoff final underway it's Charlton's fourth Wembley appearance the last was 11 years ago when they played Blackburn in the four members cup final whatever happened to that and the referee wants a word already here with a former Newcastle man Lee Clark, the referee incidentally, Eddie Wollstonehead. So Charlton have a free kick. Kinsella stands over the ball. Hoisted to the back post, looking for Mark Bright. Hoisted away, and as far as Kinsella again. This is Jones. It was Newton actually with the layoff. That was Jones. The ball has ricocheted here for Darren Holloway, and Holloway completes the clearance. Darren Holloway, the 20-year-old right back. Good start here by Charlton. That's a rather weak attempt on goal by Mark Bright. And the ball is out of play. Mark Bright, who's played here for Crystal Palace and uh, Sheffield Wednesday in his career. Lionel Perez is the goalkeeper of Sunderland. Gorgeous afternoon, soaring temperatures, soaring expectations by the two sets of supporters. There's Phillips now. Yard gets it back to his goalkeeper, Illich. Heaney. Struck forward by Bowen, looking for Mandonka. Great header there by Rufus. Kinsella tries to win it. It's all on the fast and furious in the opening few minutes. Given away to Sean Newton now, Charlton Athletic. Mills arriving to his right. It's a rather poor ball, to be honest, and held back to his goalkeeper by Jody Craddock. This is Michael Gray, the fullback of Sunderland. Sunderland making their sixth Wembley appearance. Quinn Phillips. Lee Clark now. Summerby. Bowen stood up well. Lee Clark. Ray by Yards. Jody Craddock. Holloway. Keith James with the emphatic tackle. Keith Jones played twice at Wembley as a schoolboy for England. Free kick goes Sunderland's way. Kevin Phillips just looking to get into the game. Summerby will take the free kick. No doubt he'll try to pick out the... Uh, I thought he was going to pick out the head of uh, Niall Quinn. Holloway tries to do that. Picks out Craddock. Johnston. Craddock! This has gone. There was an offside there which assisted Charlton Athletic. And this is the goalkeeper Sasa Illich, who's not conceded a goal in his last nine games. That's 13 and a half hours of football. There are representatives here from the Yugoslav Football Association who are keen to sign Elic, who could still go to the World Cup for Yugoslavia. The first choice Yugoslav goalkeeper is currently struggling with injury. Danny Mills with his free kick from the Norwich City player.
Pushed it into the box. But there's his Kenfred and he's unchallenged as he claims the ball. Mills. Kinsella almost caught in possession. Rode the challenge of ball rather well. Sean Newton now for Charlton. Mills. Mendonca. Clever turn. Try to play the ball inside the fullback. Newton has to be quick here. Not quite uh, as quick as he would have liked. There was a good deal of pace on the ball. And despite the sprint there of Sean Newton, he was just unable to keep it in play. Great vision there by Mendonca. Sean Newton, the England under 21 international. Perez with the goal kick. Licked on by Bright. Oh, that's a testing back pass there by Craddock. Newton. Newton has uh, picked up a whack on his head and rather sportingly Michael Gray just helped the ball out of play. Finally clash of heads. Involving Lee Clark and Sean Newton. No malice in the challenge. Peter Reid, the manager of Sunderland, who says this the most important game of his managerial career. Lee Clark appears to be OK. Similar story for Sean Newton. And Mills takes the threat. They're determined to have a party. Ramritz... Uh, not that long ago, their neighbours from Newcastle were here in the FA Cup final when Newcastle and their fans felt they didn't really participate in that showpiece. Didn't really do the club or the city justice, so they're not going to make that mistake here. Their last Wembley win was back in 73 when they beat Leeds in an FA Cup final here. Johnston. Phillips tackled instantly by Kinsella. I don't think Phillips is going to be afforded too much space today. His reputation goes before him. I don't think Darren Holloway agreed with the referee's decision on that occasion. Free kick now to Charlton. Wasted comprehensively. Darren Holloway happy to have the ball back in his palms once again. Quinn Holloway struck quickly forward. And then to touch by Richard Rufus. It really is a nervy opening by both teams. So much at stake in many ways, more than an FA Cup final. It's estimated that uh, the promoted side will be at least three to five million pounds better off due to sponsorship deals and television money should they play in the Premier League next season. It's a huge financial incentive. Heaney struggled to keep on his feet and he's won his side a free kick. Aaron Holloway there was judged to have fouled Heaney. There was no foul there. Maybe he was doing a bit of barging with his right arm. And that's why Charlton have been awarded the free kick. And Darren Holloway finds his name in the referee's notebook.
Charlton with a free kick. Mills peels for handball, only half hearted. Going to Sunderland. But the referee's doing a free kick for the push there. Sunderland just look a little bit nervier than Charlton. There's been so much excitement in the city over the last week or so. It's almost as if their fans expect Sunderland to win this game rather than hope they win this game. This is Kinsella. Bright. Sean Newton now for Charlton. Takes on Michael Gray. Johnston with a clearance, this is Phillips. Clark takes over, Summerby. Charlton have built up a reputation over the last few weeks, or should I say last few years, of being a real footballing side. They love to spread the ball around. And they can mix it as well. Uh, there's uh, Nicky Simmerby wading in there. Keith Jones. And a push there on Mark Bright. Free kick to Charlton. Pushes by Darren Williams. Bowen. Bright. Jones. Loses possession. Lee Clark now for Sunderland. Rufus, the back marker for Charlton. Kinsella. This is Danny Mills. Mendonca, who's being booed by the Sunderland fans. That's because Mendonca's family came from Sunderland and he's seen as something of a traitor. Niall Quinn. Holloway, poor ball, Mendonca now for Charlton, can they break quickly? Michael Gray with the intercepting tackle. And then gets it wide here to Alan Johnston, but the ball was out of play. Charlton have got out the blocks rather quickly. Sunderland still adjusting their spikes at the moment. This Sunderland's third appearance in the playoffs. They've lost the previous two. Can they shake off that unwanted hat trick? Bowen's first touch was disappointing. This is Niall Quinn. Some of these race forward. Lee Clark. Great. Gray goes to return. Brave attempt to put the cross in. And then he had to sprint desperately to keep the ball alive and had to ride a tackle as well. Which was coming in from uh, Sean Newton. Good covering here by Newton. Had a lot of ground to make up. Did his job well. Michael Gray was sent off at West Bromwich Albion and only returned after suspension for the semi-final second leg. They still haven't worked the ball past Illich yet. Gray. Rufus. Very calmly done indeed, but Lillich might have given it away. What was all that about? Rufus and Lillich getting themselves in a real old muddle. Somehow Charlton escaped. There's a foul by Phillips, is going to be booked, but Illich wasn't really uh, 
on the same wavelength there as his central defender Richard Rufus. Meanwhile, the leading goal scorer of Sunderland was going to be booked. But this was really a moment's madness here by Charlton. Uh, was it just trying to chip the ball around the attacker? I'm not quite sure what the idea was here. It was neither a clearance nor a chip, and uh, Johnston moved in. Could have been an embarrassing moment for Sasa Illich, the goalkeeper. Confirmation that this man here has been booked, Kevin Phillips. Still having his name sung from the terraces. Mills. Bright. Ball's out of play. Bowen with the throw. Ben Monka. Clive Ben Donker, who supported Sunderland as a boy. 50 of his family have come down from the northeast, presumably to support Sunderland, but with uh, very mixed emotions, I'm sure. Top scorer this season with 25 goals, Mendonca. The loser in the playoff semi finals whilst he was with Rotherham. But now at the uh, threshold of another exciting chapter in his career. Quinn. Phillips is offside. This little and large partnership of Sunderland has been very effective indeed. That was a very close call, you know, wasn't it? Half a yard, a little more than that. Phillips would have been onside there. And the free kick given away this time by Darren Williams. Referee wants that defensive wall to retreat a few more yards. It's Bowen. Chipped in towards Bright, repelled by the Sunderland defence. And that's really a mistimed challenge by the captain, Mark Kinsella, but it's going to be a yellow card nonetheless. And that's a sort of uh, tackle which going to be stepped out at the World Cup because well, it was a pointless sort of exercise, wasn't it? The ball had gone, the player had gone. I think the uh, referee, Eddie Wustenholm, was absolutely right there. Quint, he was levering his jump off the back of Danny Mills. Quinn now 31 years old and has never been on the losing side at Wembley. Bright with a flick on, it's off to Holloway and it comes here to Perez. Michael Gray, still nil nil. That's slightly more than. Uh, 18 minutes of the game. Gray with the throw. Johnston, good turn. Gray rattles his cross against the side of Danny Mills. Gray and then to Sandland.
Gray. Quinn. I'm not sure the goalkeeper was quite supposed to pick that one up, but it wasn't intended as a back pass. Oh, confidently picked the ball up there, Sasa Ilic. Holloway. Now, I thought Phillips was pushed out. I think he was by Eddie Yards. I think I'm right in saying that neither goalkeeper has made a significant save in the opening 20 minutes of the match. But uh, I guess many observers thought it was going to be tight. Williams. Phillips. Works it wide here to Summerby. And we're going to have a corner. Ricocheted off the fire of Mark Byrne, the left back of Charlton Athletic. So a chance for Sunderland to apply some real pressure on that Charlton goal. To approach the midway point of the first half. Summerby's corner. And there was a free header there for Kevin Ball. Kevin Ball, the only survivor of the Sunderland team that last appeared here at Wembley, that was in the 92 FA Cup final, that was against Liverpool. Should be Perez's ball, indeed it is. Phillips helping it wide to Summerby. On the way. Tackles by Kinsella. Ball wins it. Quinn. I suppose it's worth speculating on which of these two teams are better equipped for life in the Premier League. Financially, I think the answer would have to be Sunderland. But Charlton have made giant strides in the last few years. This is Johnson making giant strides. And he's unable to pick out a colleague. Charlton's ground uh, currently being uh, redeveloped. There will be an increase of capacity there next season, no matter what happens in this afternoon's game. Sunderland, of course, moved to a new stadium a year ago. Michael Gray gets the ball away. Johnson struggles to stay on his feet. It's a throw in, I think, here to Charlton Athletic, which uh, Danny Mills will take. This Charlton's eighth season outside the top division of English football. Mendoka, lovely turn, lovely goal, Charlton score first. And it's the man who stood on the terraces of Roker Park as a boy, Clive Mendonca, who scores the opening goal of the playoff final. Rich irony indeed that it's Mendonca who scores against Sunderland. Lovely flick on by Bright. An outstanding turn by Mandonka and an outstanding goal. He left two in his wake and then Perez was grounded. And suddenly Charlton Athletic have dreams of playing in the Premier League next season. Quinn now for Sunderland. On the balance of play, that's just about deserved, I think. Heaney hooks the ball forward. Well, one or two eyebrows are raised when Charlton played Grimsby Town, £700,000 for Clive Mendonca at the start of the season. And if his goal sees Charlton up, it'll be seen as a snip. 
Grimsby yesterday celebrated promotion success in the playoffs from Division 2. And incidentally, both playoff finals we've had over the weekend have both been settled by a solitary goal. I wonder if this will be celebrated, or this will be settled rather, by a solitary goal. Look at Alan Kirbisley. Manager of Charlton Athletic. The stakes have suddenly been raised. And Mendonca is trying to get away from his marker. Jody Craddock again. This is Heaney. Good spell here for Charlton. Kinsella. Bowen. And his cross is behind him. Charlton just seemed to settle quicker in the opening 10-15 minutes. And there's one or two anxious glares now from those Sunderland fans who know how important it is to the well-being of their club to go up. Well, they have to overcome a one-goal deficit now. And all the noise you can hear is from the Charlton fans. Johnston in towards Quinn. Niall Quinn. And had the ball taken off the end of his toe by Mark Bowen. Good defending there from the former Norwich player. Summerby with a throw. Quinn with a flick on. Ball! Oh, it's just wide! Kevin Ball within a foot of the equaliser. And it appeared there that Sunderland just might have found. A quick reply to that goal from Mendonca. Phillips was only a foot or so away from making contact with the shot. Phillips was almost there to steer it in. Braddock. Right. Got wide by Jones. Mendonca. Yeah, disappointing ball. Mendonca's won it back though. Before skidding on the Wembley turf. Perez. Williams. Some of it. Phillips gets away from Mills. Kevin Phillips now. Good cross. Quinn. And was there a foul on the goalkeeper? I think there was. Niall Quinn almost knocked the goalkeeper and the ball into the net. Quinn says, look, he's even smiling about it. It was a great cross here, though, by Kevin Phillips. Bent away from the goalkeeper. Many yards and the ball hooked off his own goal line as an insurance policy anyway, but whoa. Sunderland have roared back though after doing a goal behind. Charlton really have tweaked the tail of a sleeping lion. And that lion is roaring now. Gray fires it forward. Yards with the header. What a long time Charlton have waited to return to the top flight. Peter Reid's side desperate to deny them. It's only a year ago since Reid tasted relegation with Sunderland. Phillips has suddenly become a much better game of football. Darren Holloway. Williams, Williams again. Three here's Michael Gray. 
Johnston. Lee Clark. Suddenly the whole weight of expectation seems to have throttled Sunderland. And Charlton and their fans are having a marvellous day out. We've hit the half-hour mark with Charlton in front. And they're singing about going up. The ball was out of play before Holloway slammed it downfield. Perez comes to claim this one. Remember when Perez played in uh, France, he used to wear these short sleeve goalkeeping shirts. He obviously can't find any in this country because every time he plays for Sunderland, he rolls up his sleeves. And his teammates need to roll up their sleeves, to be honest, because Charlton are taking this game by the scruff of its neck. Heaney with a cross, looking for Bright. And Mark Wright desperately close to number two. Good cross here by the player currently on loan from Manchester City. And he picked up out Mark Bright. And fullback did just about enough to put Bright off for making a clean contact which would have troubled Perez. Nicky Summerby, another former Manchester City player. Oh, Summerby was taken very late by the goal scorer Mendonca. Calm down. That's the message from the referee. Yeah, a little bit of exuberance there by Mendonca. It was never his ball to go for. And to be honest, Mendonca risked personal injury to himself by making that tackle. Johnston. Somehow Sunderland's attempts on goals have been a little bit half-hearted. Eddie Yowds, the Charlton central defender, was a member of the Bradford City team that won the 1996 Division II playoff final here against Knox County. Jones. Phillips. Very clear by Rufus. This is Yards. Phillips. Clark. And goes Sunderland's way. Holloway. Summerby. Faced by Bowen. Nicky Summerby, whose father was Mike Summerby. Had a very successful career with Manchester City as Alan Kirbishley, manager of Chop, courted by several leading clubs in the country. Just wonder whether if Chop can win promotion, he'll be happy to stay with his club. But he and Peter Reid played in the same England under 21 side.
about 10 minutes to go to half time. Throw into Sunderland, which Holloway will take. Quinn, Holloway, Rufus. Kinsella. Given away to Mendonca, all the options to his right. Including Danny Mills in possession now. Mills again. You could see he always wanted that on his right foot. It was just a pleasing way Charlton Athletic have taken the game to Sunderland. They've been prepared to attack. And while not every attack has resulted in the goal bound attempts which Perez has had to deal with at least they've created the greatest share of scoring opportunities and have the only goal of the game so far Newton Stand up if you're going up is the cry of the Charlton fans who are all on their feet at the moment. They're determined to have a bit of a party here. Phillips fouled by Mills who just played to the back of Phillips. Somewhat ironical to find Sunderland in this playoff final. When they were last promoted in 96 as champions, they had 83 points. They finished this season with 90, but that wasn't good enough for automatic promotion. Hence, they find themselves in the playoffs. And after overcoming Sheffield United in the semis, into the final. Here's Niall Quinn, who's had a frustrating afternoon so far. He would have pushed there on Danny Mills. Right in front of the referee's assistant. Some of it. Holloway for Sunderland. Some of it. Holloway. Summerby again. And a great tackle by Mark Bowen. Mark Bowen has been my man of the match so far as far as Charlton are concerned. He's had a splendid game. Quinn. Bowen again. Look at him here. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Summerby come off at half time. Because at the moment, Mark Bowen has some of me deep inside his pocket. Darren Williams. There's an England fan to their cost on Saturday. There's only so long the Sunderland fans are going to put up with this rather inept performance by Sunderland. Soon hope will evaporate in the bright sunshine. As Sunderland contemplate another season playing in the nationwide first division. You can already hear a bit of frustration creeping into the fans from the northeast. Quinn hopelessly mistimed his jump there. Charlton are playing better, it's as simple as that. This is Keith Jones. Ball's not wide here to Neil Heaney. Mendonca. It's a corner to Chop. Richard Rufus has come forward here for Charlton.
Yelts! Oh, he just needed a bit more meat in the header. And Chomp would have been going in at half time, 2 0 up. Yelts had just pulled away from Niall Quinn. And there was enough of a connection there from Jody Craddock to take the ball away from goal. Mendonca's looking to get on the end of this ball. The whistle's gone there. Charlton caught offside. First touch by Johnston took the ball out of play. He's claiming he was fouled there. Uh, Sunderland have the free kick. This would be a superb time for Sunderland to find an equaliser. They haven't played well in the opening 40 minutes. Johnson with a free kick. Up towards Quinn. Chests it down. Cleared by Charlton. Williams. Holloway. Williams again. Great. And this is Holloway. Summerby. Oh dear me. Just underlines the problems Sunderland have had in the first half. Summerby. Holloway. Felix shielded the ball well. Can they initiate a Sunderland raid of any note now in the last five minutes of the first half? Quinn, good lead. Phillips, Clark goes close. Easily Sunderland's best attack of the first half. Great ball struck forward here by Jody Craddock. Quinn helped it down. Laid off by Phillips, and Clark goes close. Just hit it with the outside of his right boot, and really was unable to keep the ball down. Yout. Newton. Johnston. Good defending there by Darren Williams. Great. Johnston. Rufus played to the back of Niall Quinn. And we're going to have another booking. Third chart and caution of the match. Mendonca, Kinsella, and now Rufus have all been cautioned here. Got an unnecessary challenge. Because had Quinn turned him here, it would have taken. Rufus right out of the game. I think Rufus angry with himself more than anything else. Now, can Charlton hang on till half time? Michael Gray with a free kick. Rufus missed it. Rufus is being pushed by Quinn. Eagle-eyed referee's assistant spotted it. Bowen. He really hasn't put a foot wrong all match so far. This is Yards. Phillips. Michael Gray.
Johnston. And the free kick goes Sunderland's way. I'm not sure the uh, Charlton fans agree with that. Charlton being pressed back then in the closing stages of the first half. Johnston drives it in. Quinn, this is done again. Every time the ball goes near Niall Quinn, there appears to be a free kick given against him. He was pushing uh, Yards. But look at Yards, he had hold of uh, Quinn's shirt there. Similar story at the other end of the field. Three minutes of stoppage time to be added on at the end of this first half. A new innovation by the authorities in English football. So the crowd know exactly how long it's going to be played at the end of the allotted 45 minutes. Kinsella. Newton. Gray gives it back to Sean Newton. Mills. Kevin Ball to the rescue of the captain of Sunderland. Mills will take this throw. Mendonca. Ball still in play. Not for much longer, though. Johnston got it out of play. Throw into Charlton. Danny Mills. Their right back will take it. Johnston. Gray helps it forward. It's Lee Clark with the cross. Quinn, Summerbay! And he was almost in his shooting stride when the ball was whipped away from him by Eddie Yowds. Only a matter of seconds left now. This should be the goalkeeper's ball. Some of me thought he was through here. Yowds with a great tackle. And there's a half-time whistle. And Donka, the Sunderland fan as a boy, has given Charlton Athletic the lead. And in the two playoff finals we've had so far, one goal has been enough to win it. Peter Reid knew he knows he has some stern words for his side at the interval after Mandonka scored the only goal of the match so far. Half-time score from Wembley in this Division 1 playoff final. It's Charlton 1, Sunderland 0.
commentary restarts in 10 seconds. Welcome back. Sunderland have made a substitution at half time with Chris Makin coming on, replacing Darren Holloway. They're a goal down at half time in this Division 1 playoff final. These pictures coming to you live from Wembley Stadium in London. The winners go through to the Premier League next season. Sunderland, no doubt, with uh, a few words from their manager, Peter Reid, ringing in their ears. Get the second half underway, knowing they have to do better, otherwise they will be playing in the nationwide first division once again next season. And Charlton Athletic, a rather unfashionable club from South London, will be rubbing shoulders with the Manchester Uniteds and Liverpools and Arsenals of the footballing elite in this country. It really has been a season of records for Charlton Athletic. They've registered eight successive league wins, finished the season with the most number of points, that's 88. They've now gone nine games without conceding a goal. Can they hold on here against Sunderland? Summerby with the cross. Johnson tries to head it back in, it's picked up here by Danny Mills, the right back of Charlton. Ball had gone out of play, and the referee's assistant was very close to that. <laughs> Making couldn't win it. Lee Clark now for Sunderland driving forward. Quinn. Is a real waste. I think Niall Quinn here was expecting Lee Clark to come all the way with the ball and have a shot on goal. And by the time he reached the edge of the penalty area, he wasn't really sure what to do. It wasn't Quinn's most inventive attempt on goal this season. Summerby unable to win it. Make it. Make it again. Craddock. Williams. All the way off here towards Michael Gray. Mendonca. Sean Newton now for Charlton. Bright's arriving inside the box. This is Mark Bright now. Heaney. Heaney again. Look how Charlton have held on to possession. Bowen. Mendonca. Bowen. Some of me gets it clear. Lee Clark now. Terrific 30-yard uh, ball to Quinn, and Quinn lays it off here to Johnston. Danger here for Charlton. Johnston has space for the shot. And as yet, Sasa Illich has now gone more than 14 hours without conceding a goal. Hasn't had a save to make. Great ball, though. Good layoff there indeed by Quinn. Look at the gap here opening up for Johnston. Maybe he should have played the ball to his left then. In the end, it all ended up in a rather weak shot on goal. Summerby. Sunderland have started this uh, second half brightly. I think that ball was out of play. Sunderland have started this half brightly. They've done well. They've obviously just picked up the pace a little bit. And the more Sunderland press forward, the more it's going to turn into a more open game because as Sunderland, edged on by their fans, chase the game, Charlton are going to take advantage of hitting Sunderland on the counter-attack. Make it.
Kicks away from Keith Jones. And picks out Quinn. Quinn has Phillips behind him. Quinn sweeps it forward. Mills shows safety, and suddenly the Roka Roar of yesteryear arrives at Wembley as Sunderland have the corner. Sotheby with the corner. It's in! Vile Quinn's equalised! Five minutes after the restart, Sunderland's fans at last have something to cheer. Illich has beaten at last. What was Kinsella doing? It was meant to be marking the near post, and the ball flew right past him. Summerby took the corner, and it was as simple as a diving header from Niall Quinn to reignite this playoff final. Niall Quinn with his 16th goal of this season makes it Charlton 1, Sunderland 1. Well, this is a real test now, Charlton Athletics nerve. Kinsella, who I think was to blame for that goal, to be honest. Mendonca. Did well to pick out a goalie, Kinsella! And it rattles into Darren Williams and goes to the corner. This is turning into the, turning out rather to be a very absorbing game of football now. Mendonca held the ball up well. I wonder where Kinsella's shot might have gone. Heaney with the corner. Yeah, it's Rufus. Quinn. Keith Jones. And there's a free kick. The referee waited to see if there's any advantage. Making really uh, slightly fortunate not to be cautioned there. And suddenly those Sunderland fans are in full voice. Perez is the animated figure on the goal line for Sunderland. Can Sunderland hang on now? They fought so hard to get back into the game. They don't want to lose another goal here. Kinsella, cleverly done. Bowen! Oh, it's ricocheted off Mendonca. And saved by Perez. Clever free kick there by Charlton. Kinsella shaped as if to turn it back to a colleague. And then it was all hands to the pumps for Sunderland. Craddock. The first playoff final this season to go to more than one goal. Foul by Bowen. This is a real test of Charlton Athletic. They want to rub shoulders with the great clubs in English football. This is a great test for them. Nicky Summerby with a free kick. Headed out by Eddie Yards, corner kick to Sunderland. And those Sunderland fans are making one heck of a dip.
Johnston with a corner. 1 1 between Charlton and Sunderland. Michael Gray with a throw. Can't be surprised to find Sunderland finding the net. They ended the season as the country's top scorers with 86 goals. That one might win number 87. Ball. Heaney with a low. Bowen. And Charlton suddenly seem a little bit nervier. And in Kirbishley tries to look cool and collected. I'm sure he's a jumble of nerves though. Elitch's record has been smashed at long last. Making drives it forward, that's quick. Kinsella gives it away to Johnston. Clark. Gray. Clark again. Quinn's onside! Oh, what a chance! What a chance for Niall Quinn! There was a moment's disbelief there around the stadium when everyone assumed Niall Quinn was offside. He wasn't. He was onside by a mile and missed by a mile. Well, Sunderland couldn't want a better opportunity than this. Niall Quinn, who's already scored one, thumps that one hopelessly over the top. Kinsella. Newton tries to get there. Kinsella again. Terrific game of football now, and Niall Quinn looks like a, a different player, to be honest. In the opening 45 minutes, he was arguing every decision which went against him. Now he looks hungry for success and hungry to lead Sunderland back into the promised land of the Premier League. Darren Holloway. Credit. Lee Clark. Quinn. Still able to win the ball. Ball. Phillips. It's another one for Phillips. The leading goal scorer in this division scores again. Again, there were appeals for offside, but quite clearly Phillips was onside. And once he had the goal at his mercy, Phillips doesn't miss. He's had one chance in this match, and he's put it away. And in the space of seven minutes, Sunderland have come from a goal behind and now lead 2-1. Real Poacher's goal. That is 35th goal of the season. It means he breaks Brian Clough's post-war scoring record with the club. From despair to utter delirium, that's the story for the Sunderland supporters. Quinn again, Phillips looking for the ball. Well, this match didn't really kick off until half-time as far as Sunderland were concerned. And here's Mendoza! The whistle's gone. Mendonca was through, he was offside. 
Not even time to draw breath here. He was level, wasn't he? Slow motion replay suggests the referee's assistant made a mistake. Not easy to spot them at that speed, though. Yeah, it's fouling Niall Quinn and Wembley once again, as it has so many times before, as a cauldron of noise. Great when you're winning, awful when you're losing. Sunderland leading 2-1. Gray fires in the free kick. Quinn! Charlton Athletic just can't put the handbrake on Sunderland at the moment. Every time Sunderland get inside the penalty area, they look likely to score. Quinn has claimed one, Phillips has claimed one. And that partnership now, this season, incredibly, has brought, brought 51 goals. That Quinn-Phillips partnership. And suddenly Kevin, Kevin Phillips is the toast of the Sunderland fans at Wembley. They were so quiet in the first half. You think half of them had gone to sleep, but not now. And they're singing his name, claiming him the hero of Wearside. Mills. Kirbishley is about to make a change here. He's not prepared to see all his hard work over the last nine months disappear without some resistance. Mills. Are you watching Newcastle? Is the taunt of the Sunderland fans. Newcastle, who lost the FA Cup final here. Now Sunderland are winning here. Mendonca. Newton almost through. The whistle has gone. There was contact again between Yards and Niall Quinn. Free kick to Sunderland. Just wonder what Charlton are going to do here in terms of change of personnel. I suspect it could be John Robinson who might come on, a player who's been out for a couple of months with a hairline fracture to his leg. More on that in a moment. Williams fires it forward. Quinn flipped it on. Phillips was just fouling Rufus. Free kick now to Charlton. Kinsella. Back here to Ilic. Rufus. Mills. Jones. Mandonka. 11 here is Heaney. Bowen outside him. Bowen's cross. Bright. Kinsella. And held by Perez. Good pressure by Charlton. They're responding magnificently. And this game seems to get better as every minute passes. It'd be a brave man to suggest the outcome. Here's uh, Steve Jones. 
coming on and he'll replace Neil Heaney. So Neil Heaney comes off. The wide man and they're putting an extra striker on. Steve Jones, who had a spell at uh, West Ham United, also was back at Bournemouth this season where he began his career. I think just looking at what um, Jones was indicating to his teammates, he was saying 4 3 3. So three man attack now for Charlton. important goal that was by Niall Quinn smuggling in at the near post and Niall Quinn trying to make sure that he's never been and never will be on the losing side at Wembley and then uh, seven minutes later his partner in crime Kevin Phillips scored a second Sunderland goal it's Charlton one Sunderland two Win. Yells. Jones. Intercepted there by Craddock. Mendonca. Newton. Mendonca again. Needs support. Has it here in Bowen. Jones, Newton, suddenly Sunderland are winning the battle of midfield, Phillips will leave it, Ray, Michael Gray's determination and uh, that of his colleagues just underlines Sunderland's desire to win this game. We've reached the three-quarter point of the game. Michael Gray. Rufus sets it clear. Quinn. Ball was the initial spurt into the box. Well, his shot was blocked and came back off for Yards and then Kinsella then had the attempt on goal. Just wonder whether Charlton can rally now. It isn't going to be easy for them. Mills. Rufus. Newton. Football again by Charlton. Jones. Oh, went looking for the ball even when he appeared to have lost it. Keith Peacock. Alan Kirbisley, rather forlorn figures now on the dugout. Charlton just need that little bit of luck now. Mills with the throw. The header by Jones is wide. Peter Reid, who played here ten times as a Everton and England player. Wembley winner with Everton in 1984. But this would give him so much pleasure.
Jones looks like a problem for Keith Jones. Charlton, who was second in the table at the end of January, their highest league placing for two years, just unable to stay in the automatic promotion spots. Surprised everybody by edging out at Switch Town in the semi finals of the playoffs. Made it to Wembley. Sunderland lead by two goals to one. 20 minutes away are Sunderland from returning to the Premier League. Phillips. Summerby. And we have a record attendance for a playoff final. 77,775 inside the ground. Just uh, 3,000 short of capacity. Jones. Mendoka! 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 He's done it again! They won't lie down! Terrific skill here by Mendonca. Jones was determined to release the ball. Managed to pick out Jones. That's Keith Jones. And Mendonca was onto it. And slammed the ball in. And Charlton, who looked out of this playoff final, are suddenly back with a vengeance. And look at the relief on Kerbishley's face. Well, I've said it a few times about Mendonca supporting Sunderland as a boy. I bet they wish they'd signed him. Second goal then of the match for Mendonca. Easily the best of the playoff finals this year. And Sunderland's galloping enthusiasm has all but been punctured now. They're back at 2 2. We could even have extra time, we could even have penalties. Summerby. The tackles are flying in. Summerby again. Clark. Quinn. Oh, it's a beauty. I think somebody better go pinch Niall Quinn because I guess he thinks he's dreaming. Clark fired this one in. Everyone expected Quinn to head that one down. But what a finish. And if Mendonca can score twice for Charlton, Niall Quinn can score twice for Sunderland. And is this the goal to take Sunderland up? The goal comes just a minute after Mandonka had made it 2-2. Charlton must be absolutely heartbroken. It ain't over yet. Five goals in this playoff final and still 16 minutes left. Daniel Di Chio is on for Sunderland, replacing Kevin Phillips. 
But is this incredible tale yet at an end? And here comes Sunderland again. Summerby, Di Keo's calling for the ball. Di Keo! Would have helped it if he kicked it properly. And here come Charlton. What a playoff final this is. Kinsella gets it wide. Steve Jones. Mendonca's on his hat trick. Still Mendonca. And away by Lee Clark. What a game. Ray clatters in to his opponent there, uh, Keith Jones. This was a superb attempt, uh, superb chance rather for Di Keo. Di Keo, who was with Queen's Park Rangers, tried his hand in Italy with Sampdoria and then moved on from Sampdoria. And now back in this country, here's John Robinson coming on now for Charlton Athletic. Player who's been out for a couple of months with a hairline fracture of his leg. Danny Mills, the player coming off. I think they're going to go with a back three. I imagine that's the, the plan now. Craddock. Minix the ball. Mendonca! Goodness me. He really got all of this shot as well. And had Mendonca scored a hat-trick at Wembley, he wouldn't have been allowed back to his native Sunderland, that's for sure. I think he would have been stopped going into Sunderland by the police for his own protection. Lee Clark was fouled, free kick to Sunderland by the player who's just come on, John Robinson. Clark again. Great. Lee Clark. It's hard to believe that the drama's over yet. I still suspect the odd goal or two before the final whistle. Peter Reid has seen it all. Peter Reid, who graced the England team in the 86 World Cup. In fact, he played in that game when Diego Maradona scored the famous hand of God goal. And indeed, Maradona drifted past him when he scored that incredible second goal for Argentina. Piquillo chases this one. Daniel Di Chio of Italian stock. Mendonca looking for the ball. Quinn. Through here is Bowen. and helps it forward, Di Keo gives chase Rufus Kinsella picked up by Gray
Keith Jones. Rufus. And here's Yao to suddenly try and take a stranglehold now on this match. They've just got to stop Charlton from playing in the last 11 minutes. And the prize, that enormous prize financially, will be theirs. Perez is almost in trouble here. Robinson. Sunderland just stuttered nervously in defence. And the expletive on the lips there of Peter Reid underlined his disgust that Sunderland almost threw it away again. Robinson with the corner. Perez with a uh, very confident catch. Look at that enormous ball by Perez. Kind of pushing and taking involving Johnston. Charlton in a real hurry to get on with the game. Make no mistake, Charlton will create chances before the final whistle. The question is, can they put one of those chances away? Newton. Michael Gray. Rufus with a foul, free kick to Sunderland. And let's not uh, forget, this is the end of a very gruelling season for these two football clubs. Started all the way back in August. And what come the end of May, they're still thrashing it out, trying to decide who's going to go up into the Premier League. To be honest, the uh, playing public don't deserve a game of this quality. Given one or two tired limbs and lingering injuries and Sunderland pressing for another goal this is Niall Quinn this is gone what for? I think he was offside I presume an offside here now there was a push wasn't there by uh, De Keo. Sunderland have another free kick. Seventy-seven thousand enjoying a quite extraordinary game of football. Bikio and. Uh, Quinn getting involved in a bit of nonsense there. Mendonca appeared to be held back there by Williams. And the referee agrees. There was a foul. What's the referee going to give here? I presume it's a yellow. Yes, it is a yellow. Well, more importantly, Sunderland had to defend this free kick. And the referee knows exactly where he wants that free kick taken. So. Kinsella and Bowen will orchestrate this free kick for Charlton Athletic. Goal now would almost certainly take us into extra time. Bowen. Oh, what a save by Perez to deny Mark Bright. An instinctive save by the Frenchman. He must have known little about that. The ball ricocheted towards him. And he clawed the ball to safety. Corner to Charlton. A rather optimistic appeals for a penalty there. Clear to see if a uh, push by Di Keo. Rufus.
Robinson, corner. Good pressure here by Chong Athletic. Robinson drives over the corner. It's there! Rufus has scored! Perez came an awful long way for the ball, and he got nowhere near it. Look at the goalkeeper. Went through a crowd of players. Got stuck halfway up the elevator. And Rufus guided the ball into an unguarded net. And after 85 minutes, incredibly, it's 3-3. What a game. Six goals. And we're still no nearer knowing who is going to the Premier League next season. I bet one or two Charlton fans are already on their way back down the North Circular heading to the south of London. Believe it or not, Richard Rufus hasn't scored in 165 career appearances for the club until today. Quinn. Well, I did warn you there might be a little bit more drama. The Charlton fans just can't believe what's happening. Their team has taken them through a roller coaster ride of so many emotions. And when Richard Rufus scores, you know you're dreaming. Don't disappear to the kitchen yet to make yourselves a cup of tea because a year ago the winning goal came in injury time right at the end of the game I recall from David Hopkin then of Crystal Palace there could still be another goal still a knockout punch Craddock Di Keo, Craddock. Bowen. Mendonca. And the ball fired forward. More in hope than accuracy. Some of it. Michael Gray. Johnston tackled by Robinson. To be honest, both these teams deserve promotion on the display that they laid out before these supporters and the watching television audience today. This has been quite unbelievable. What a finale to the domestic season in England. Making gets it wide. Michael Gray now for Sunderland. Making again. Dikio. And Quinn threw himself at the ball. And crash landed. Good header back here by Di Keo. The ball was always landing behind Quinn and therefore difficult to scoop the ball goalwards. But Quinn has made more than a useful contribution in Sunderland's calls today. Two goals and still Sunderland not assured yet of a place in the Premier League next season. We're inside the final minute of the 90. Robinson. Is there still a winning goal in the script of this incredible drama? And 
Robinson gets the ball out of play. It'll be very cruel now on one of these two teams for a late, late goal. Four minutes of stoppage time to be added on at the end. So it's not over by a long way. Four minutes to be added on by the referee for stoppages. Johnston. Somebody's got cramp. No wonder. Well, four goals is enough for about three or four goals in this game, isn't it? They've been flying in with such regularity, Alan Kirbishley already thinking about extra time and who knows, penalties. Johnston with a corner. Oh, what a stop played in there by the captain, Kevin Ball. And also, also Di Keogh at the back post. Di Keogh got the final touch. May have even gone in Ball's way. Three minutes of stoppage time still to be played. Still 3-3 between Charlton Athletic and Sunderland. Mendonca. Good idea by Bright, but in the end it turns out to be a little more than a throw into Sunderland. Well, the two league meetings of these sides both ended in draws this season, so hardly a surprise that they're level again. But there has to be a winner today. Great. Away by Rufus. Steve Brown, I don't think he's saved the corner. Corner kick to Sunderland. A goal now will send them up. It's as simple as that. Summerby. Summerby again. Summerby with a throw. Away by Rufus. Clark. Quinn. Clark again, and the shot by the captain, just wide. Good little uh, minute or so of pressure there by Sunderland. There's exactly 60 seconds left, otherwise we're heading for extra time. Rufus, Keith Jones, Mendonca, who is being fouled, will have to hurry up and take the free kick quickly, there's only 30 seconds left. Have Chong got time for one last attack? 20 seconds left. It's now or never for Charlton, Bowen. And Perez catches the ball, and that's your lot. After 90 minutes of pulsating football, which has seen both managers, Alan Kirbishley and Peter Reid, go through every emotion. The teams are still locked together. That late equalising goal by Richard Rufus, the first of his career, cancelled out any advantage Sunderland might have held. Niall Quinn claimed two second-half goals. But Sunderland aren't there yet, and neither are Charlton. It's going to take extra time and possibly even penalties to decide the outcome of this First Division playoff final. The score, after 90 minutes, incredibly 
commentary restarts for the last time in 10 seconds. Welcome back. We have extra time to decide the outcome of the Division 1 playoff final for this season between Charlton Athletic and Sunderland, who served up a quite memorable football match already. 3-3 after 90 minutes, two goals claimed by Clive Mendonca, two also claimed on the opposing side by Niall Quinn. But still, we're no closer to knowing who's going to play in the Premier League next season. So we're going to have two 15-minute periods of extra time. And if the teams are still level at the end of extra time, there'll be a penalty shootout to decide who goes up. It's Sunderland who get the first period of extra time underway. And they try to hit the fast forward button involving uh, Niall Quinn. Not the referee's assistant into the middle of next week. Throw in here to Chalk to be taken by Sean Newton. Mark Bright had a good game. He supported uh, Mendon ever so well up front for Charlton. Some of them have this free kick, which uh, left back Michael Gray will take. Keo is the intended target. Quinn scoops the ball on. Dikio! Great uh, pair in his shot, it's easy for Sasa Elic. Great. Dikia. The clock now for Sunderland. The support from Macon. Quinn. Mendonca. It was a foul just before Mendonca got the ball. And the referee waited to see if there was any advantage to be had. There wasn't. White was being fouled by number six, Aaron Williams, hence the free kick to Charlton. Bowen with a free kick. Once again away by Williams. Rufus won the ball, this is Newt. Cleverly done. Sean Newt now for Charlton. Robinson. Robinson just managed to help the ball back, but... The chance had broken down by then. Michael Gray. He's done well here as Gray has put the ball an awful long way. Picks out Johnston. Something of an untidy collision involving Sean Newton there and Alan, Alan Johnston. Sean Newton has uh, picked a bit of a knock as well. You can see, I think, plenty of cramp and uh, tiredness now by the players. And the playoff final could well be decided on the relative fitness of the two teams. Another change coming up here. This looks like Steve Brown coming on here for Charlton. Steve Brown normally uh, right back. This is interesting. Uh, strikers coming off hard right. So I think what's going to happen here is Charlton are going to revert, revert to their 4-4-2 formation. Very cool when they were chasing the game. They put three up front and brought on Steve Jones. Going back to the flat back four. Medunka! If only... The chance for Mendonca. Ball came at him rather quickly. Brown. 
right? Win. Clark. Di Keo. That's a Super Bowl. Summerbay. What a tackle by Roberts. Once again, Summerbay was about to squeeze a trigger. And John Robinson flew in. It's a corner kick there to Sunderland. Still 3-3. This is the first period of extra time. Summerby with a corner. Dikio. Oh, touch on there by Darren Williams. I thought it was speeding on its way to the back post where there was a clutch of Sunderland players all ready to pounce. Including Quinn. Not to be. Sunderland, who've lost only two of their last 17 games in all competitions. Still unsure about their fate next season. That will be decided in the next half an hour or so. Steve Brown helps it forward. It's a good ball. Mendonca. Mendonca felt he should have had at least a corner. Look at the right arm there, and then the left arm of the defender, Darren Williams. That could easily, easily have been a, a penalty. Quinn uh, gives half-hearted chase. Johnston's ball wasn't that accurate, to be honest. We've had six minutes of the first period of extra time. Still 3-3. No further addition to the scoreline. Sasa Illich, who was... Preserving that proud record of not having conceded a goal in his last nine games going into this match. I imagine somewhat shell-shocked having uh, let in three. Mendonca. Some of the under pressure from Mendonca here. And some of the happy to slam the ball out of play with Mendonca breathing down his neck. Jones. Somehow both sides have just uh, slowed down a bit. Nikio. Summerby. Johnston's header wasn't too far away. Good cross from Summerby. And Johnston's header. Too far away. Kinsella. Sean Newton. Johnston. Quinn. Oh, still Quinn. Trying to pick out DK but intercepted by Kinsella. Captain of Jolt had a good game. That was a terrific ball cut out by Jody Braddock. 12 years make it. Summerby was involved in a playoff final which ended 4-3. That was when he was with Swindon. Quinn. Summerby! Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Summerby! It is 4-3! Win a playoff final, 4-3 against Leicester. And now he's made it 4-3 with, I imagine, the goal of his career.
What a goal by Nicky Summerby. And once again, Sunderland are in front. Sunderland have thrown down the Gordonland once again to Cholton Athletic. Match that if he can. So a change here for Sunderland. Alex Ray comes on. Off goes Lee Clark, who's had a super game. That is the last change of personnel Sunderland are allowed to have. All three of their substitutes are on. Johnston. Wonderful cross, Quinn's in there. Goodness me. I know he's a big fella. Maybe an inch or two more, and it could have stood in this cross from Johnston, and it would have been all over. It's been a quite marvellous game. sure what the referee was told by his assistant spotted something something involving Quinn perhaps to uh, discard your shin pads under FIFA regulations and the referee's assistant spotted that <laughs> Quinn Graham Newton the ball forward free kick to Charlton who once again find themselves behind they've led only once in the game as early as the 24th minute when Mand Mandonka scored Kinsella Yards Bowen not to see who was about to cross the ball. Robinson's done well to win it back. Well, both teams have given every ounce of effort. Burns indicating the referee should add a bit more time on his watch because he reckons a Sunderland player deliberately kicked the ball wildly into the crowd. Trying to get it as far from the pitch as possible to waste time. Quinn gets up well there. Robinson who had the shot. Brown. Steve Jones. Great cross, Ben Donka. Oh, it's 4 4. He's got a hat trick at Wembley. That's my third. What a game. Trust Ben Donka. This was sensational. Not many players claim hat-tricks at Wembley. What a tackle there by Brown. Steve Jones put in the cross. What skill by Mendonca. And what a finish.
It comes in the final minutes of the first period of extra time. She can hardly bear to look. How many more times does Sunderland need to score before they win this incredible game of football? I don't recall a 4-4 draw at Wembley before. What a day for Clive Mendonca. He'll talk about this day till he's old and grey. Newton. Foul by Alex Ray. And we're now in stoppage time. At the end of the first period of extra time. Incredibly, Charlton Athletic 4, Sunderland 4. What a finale to the season. Free kick to Sunderland. And the two people thought that was the end of the first period of extra time. Of course, no golden goal in this uh, playoff final. Had there been one, Sunderland would have been up by now. So maybe he would have scored the goal to take them up. Quinn. Ray. Steve Brown. Who had a major hand in that equaliser. Great ball again. Pelez. And there's the half-time whistle in extra time. Mendonca has scored a Wembley hat-trick. So after the first period of extra time, it's Charlton 4, Sunderland 4. Well, there has been a penalty shootout to decide a playoff final. It came into the Division 3 playoff final in 93 between Crewe and York. York won 5 3 on penalties. I wonder if there's going to be a penalty shootout in this game because Mendonca has once again drawn the sides level. What a hat trick for him. He'll remember this incredible day. Great to see the uh, opposing coaches with their arms around each other. But who will end up victorious? Maybe it will have to take a penalty shootout to settle this one. Peter Reid looking at well, his complexions as grey as the hair on his head, to be honest. So, 15 minutes away from a penalty shootout. But let's not underestimate the capacity of these two teams to score goals. We could still have a 6-4 scoreline. We could have a 6 all scoreline as well. Right. The one thing in Sunderland's favour is, apart from that first goal by Mendonca, they have taken the lead on every occasion. Di Keo. It's always been Charlton chasing the game. Apart from that one goal right at the start of the match. Great.
throwing given away by Michael Gray. 12 here is Steve Brown. Great ball by Di Keo. Summerby. He must have thought that his goal would settle it. Summerby again. Great. Johnston steps inside New. Mendonca. Found on Mendonca, free kick to Charlton. Well, it's difficult to predict the outcome, but I just can't believe that Mendonca is going to be on the losing side today. To score a hat trick at Wembley, especially when he supported Sunderland as a boy, is just too incredible a story. And uh, it beggars belief to suggest that he would still end up on the losing team. We shall see. Just got a feeling Charlton are going to sneak it. Maybe even in the shootout. Alan Kirbishley certainly hope, hopes that's the case. Rufus. Right. Oh, he saw the headlines then. Newton's first principle or something like that. Newton's law. In the end, it's just a, another close shave on a day of so many close things. And eight memorable goals, four apiece. Kevin Phillips now uh, relegated to the role of a spectator. Steve Jones. Now Jones deliber deliberately left that ball, thinking it was going to be a corner. Keeper's ball. And we're now ten minutes away from a penalty shootout to decide who's going to go up. That really would be a heartbreaking end of the season for somebody. And maybe Sessa Illich and Lionel Perez, the two goalkeepers, are yet to have a decisive say in events. Sing your hearts out for the lads. Here's the cry in unison of both sets of supporters. This really is a terrific testament to these players. To serve up a feast like this on the final day of the domestic season it really is a terrific testament to the two clubs and the uh, players themselves. After today, all focus will be on international football and the build-up to the World Cup. But here's Di Keo now for Sunderland. Johnston! Peels for handball, they were rather half-hearted, especially from the players.
Terrific determination there by Johnston to release the ball to Summerby. Summerby again. a trip there by making I don't think so Steve Jones just tripped Ray the tempo of the game getting slower all the time good skill here by Johnston good football here by Sunderland good spell for them Makin Niall Quinn has won his team a corner kick Johnston was through here, trying to bend the ball towards goal, extract the shoulder of Eddie Yowds. The referee had a good view of that, very good view. Corner kick to Sunderland, still 4-4. And Illich has been fouled. That's a rather remarkable figure. And there was a foul there by Jody Craddock. A good day for the uh, scouts of the Yugoslav FA to turn up to see how you play, and you let in four goals. Sunderland have another free kick. Just thought Sunderland have shaded the last few minutes, and maybe getting a little bit stronger the closer we get to the penalty shootout. Probably the most expensive penalty shootout ever staged. The winners can receive around about £5 million in sponsorship deals and television endorsements. And deals, the losers go back to the nationwide first division. And there might be a goal before then. Ray. Still Ray. Make it. Gray. Michael Gray. Way by Eddie Yards. Header by Makin. This is Summerby. Summerby. Robinson helps it forward. Bowen. And eventually thump to safety. And that's a corner. So Jolt's turn to apply some pressure here. It's John Robinson to take the corner kick. We're five minutes away from penalties. We've got the last touch on that. Eddie Yout is the man in question. Went into a ruck of players and you know, couldn't really get any firm direction on his header. Live Ben Donker, only the fourth player ever to score a hat trick at Wembley in a major competition. Michael Gray. Six here is Darren Williams. Free kick to Sunderland. 
And that foul by Eddie Yowd, so Niall Quinn, they've had a battle royal today. Yowd has virtually lost patience with Niall Quinn. Will it be Nicky Summerby? Elitch's work isn't finished yet, but by a long way with a penalty shootout looming. Ray, and he flies the ball over the top. Not like that. Good idea by Ray, but the angle was always going to defeat him. We're two and a half minutes away from penalties. It's still 4-4. A whack in the face for uh, Steve Jones. Cranock with a free kick. Bit of pushing, I think, by Quinn. And a free kick to Charlton Athletic. Perez ponders the penalties. Edich, two. Donker flicks it on. Is it time for one last attack for either of these two teams? Dikio. Johnston. Yeah, he was fouled. Free kick to Sunderland. <laughs> this is a nervy time for John. Just tripped there as he was about to make his way towards goal. We're inside the final minute of extra time. Penalties about 50 seconds away. It's 4 4. Sutherland have a free kick. Gray knocks it in. Quinn and shot over the top by Craddock. And he could well have uh, just overstretched there. It wasn't an easy chance. Quinn had helped the ball back. Craddock had to reach an awful long way to swing his boot at the ball. And that could well be the last chance. Because there's only a minute of stoppage time to be added on at the end of the 15 minutes. A minute and ten left then by my calculations. And Charlton are throwing everybody forward, why not? One chance to bundle the ball into that Sutherland net and clear the pass the passage through to the Premier League for next season. Bowen with a free kick. It's now or never for Charlton. Summerby hooks the ball into the crowd. Thirty seconds left, that's all. And then we'll have penalties to decide who goes up. Not even that long, it's all over. Clive Mendonca's hat trick incredibly not enough to ensure Charlton victory in this game. Two goals for Niall Quinn, similar story for him. And the fans can sit down and have a couple of minutes breather now. Great day for Mendonca. Only the fourth player to score a hat trick at Wembley. It's down to the lottery of penalties to decide who's going to be promoted. The score after extra time is 4-4. Four, four.
commentary restarts, I promise for the last time, in 10 seconds. A penalty shootout will decide which of Charlton Athletic and Sunderland will play in the Premier League next season. The Division 1 playoff final ended 4-4 after extra time. Quite remarkable game. And now it's down to the two goalkeepers, Lionel Perez of Sunderland, who hasn't decided whether to stay at the club uh, and will decide his future in the next few weeks. And the goalkeeper of Charlton Athletic, Sasa Illich, will have a major hand in deciding who is promoted and who has the heartbreak of going back to the nationwide first division. Charlton Athletic have not been involved in a penalty shootout for seven years. That's since they met Cambridge in the Zenith Data Systems Cup first round in October 91. Imagine this penalty shootout, shootout means a little bit more to them than their last one. Both goalkeepers invited to step forward. Clive Van Donker has already scored a hat-trick this afternoon. But he is the regular penalty taker for Charlton Athletic. This would be some prize. Three goals in open play and a penalty in the shootout. Van Donker against Perez! And Van Donker scores again. What a super penalty by Mendonca. Nicky Summerby. Another player who scored in open play. Sunderland's regular penalty taker, Kevin Phillips, has already been substituted. So Summerby against Illich. Oh, what a good penalty. He thumped that one. That was either going to end up in row Z or was going to nestle in the back of the net. Two very good penalties and no surprise that still we can't separate the two teams. Steve Brown is next to take a penalty. Remember, both teams take five penalties. Perez waits on his line. This is Brown. And another good penalty. Look at the relief on his face. And Perez didn't stand a prayer, actually got his glove quite close to that one, but not a bad penalty. Alan Johnston, who has taken penalties for Sunderland this season. They can't bear to look, they just can't bear to look. Man born in Glasgow with a penalty and rattled into the corner. Honestly, feel as a neutral observer, I don't want anybody to miss. Such is the tension. Who'd want to be the player who misses a penalty? 
and prevents their side going up to the Premier League. And I can honestly say with hand on heart, I wouldn't swap places with these penalty takers for all the tea in China. Keith Jones is next. 2-2 in the shootout. Jones against Perez. Another great penalty. Another smashing penalty. I have a sneaking suspicion they've been practicing these. And those Sunderland fans go through a few more seconds of abject torture. It's the captain, Kevin Ball. Another great penalty. 3-3. I have to say that well, the goalkeeper really has stood a chance with any of the six penalties we've seen so far. John Robbins. Three three in the shootout. John Robinson, who's been out of the game for a couple of months, sends the keeper the wrong way. Oh, it's like a weight being lifted from those shoulders. And a miss now would be crucial. Chris Macon is next to go. The praying starts again. Peter Reid looks calm and collected. Chris Macon to equalise again. Oh, and it's got a hand to the ball. The closest we've seen to a save. And it's 4-4. This was desperately close. And we got his hand to it. It ricocheted off his palm and went in. Illich close to making what would have been a major breakthrough. It's 4-4. The final penalty of the five for Mark Bowen. And he scored. Five out of five for Charlton. We can't ask for much better than that. And so... Sunderland have to score this penalty. It's Alex Ray. And he's popped it into the corner. Well, given the pressure on Ray then, that was a very cool penalty indeed. And it's 5-5 after 10 penalty kicks. So all the players who have said, look, can't be out of the penalty shootout, they have to step forward now. It's sudden death. 3-3 three, three after 90 minutes, 4-4 four, four after extra time. Robinson with the next penalty. Tucked in the corner. All the pressure now is on Sunderland. A miss now. And they're out of it. And Niall Quinn. Oh, dear me. Scored two goals, never been on the losing side at Wembley. 31 years old, was about to give up the game and succumb to injury. 
and start a career as a journalist. And he scored. Six six. Full marks to both sides. How they've kept their nerve, goodness only knows. Alan Kirbishley looks philosophically on. Next, it's going to be Sean Newton. Newton against Perez. Come as you like. I am sure, in my mind, that Alan Kirbishley has had his entire squad practicing penalties all week. The quality of these penalties is unbelievable. Once again, the, the tables are turned on Sunderland. Follow that. It's Michael Gray against Illich. He saved it! Charlton are going up! Illich is their hero! But he put an arm round his shoulder. What an incredible story! They can't believe it. The underdogs, Charlton, will go into the Premier League next season. And Sutherland, with all their big plans and all their money and all their expensive imports, will play again in the nationwide first division and poor Michael Gray Sasserlich who let in four goals saves a penalty he could be off to the World Cup now with Yugoslavia what a day what a day what a way to end the season He can't believe what's just happened to him. And neither can many of these Charlton fans. Sunderland told them they'd come here to make up the numbers. But every time Sunderland scored, Charlton equalised. And in the end, when it went to the penalty shootout, Charlton edged ahead and Charlton win 7-6 on penalties. It's Charlton Athletic who are going to the Premier League next season and that's a way to do it. Congratulations to Charlton, they are promoted. Kirbishly congratulated by his playing staff, Les Reed and Keith Peacock. And, oh, what, what a day for poor Michael Gray. Nobody will feel more disappointed. Nobody will feel the elation more than the likes of Clive Mendonca. What a way to go up. No 1-0 victory for Charlton. He went the whole hog. Well, the problems now start for Charlton Athletic because they don't want to do a Barnsley and come straight down again. Meanwhile, there's plenty of moist eyes amongst the Sunderland fans. To come all this way and lose in such... Heartbreaking circumstances. And a Sunderland do a rather big bedraggled lap of honour. 
It's Charlton who are the toast of Wembley Stadium. It's been an 11 year wait for Charlton to play at Wembley. And in the end, they win promotion via that save from Sessa Ilic. Look at the despair written on Michael Gray's face. Alan Kirbishley didn't look, didn't even look at the last penalty. And then he knew that they were up when he was congratulated by Keith Peacock, his reserve team manager. Oh dear, and there's a long way back to Wearside tonight. What a dreadful journey that will be. A journey full of ifs and buts and maybes. And Mark Kinsella climbs the steps at Wembley Stadium to signify that Charlton's long wait to get back into the top flight of English football is all over. It's taken them eight years to reascend to the heights of the English game. But amidst fireworks and explosions, Charlton have created an explosion of their own at Wembley Stadium. In overcoming the overwhelming favourites, Sunderland. And via a penalty shootout, going up to the Premier League. Nicky Summerby played his part for Sunderland. Scored a goal in normal time, converted a penalty as well. And Sasselic, the safest hands in the team, has his hands on that cup. I think they're in love. Clive Mendonca, what a day for him. Alan Kerbishley, Charlton will have to fight to hang on to him. Plenty of big clubs will want him as their manager in the new season, but He's now the manager of a Premier League side. So with that penalty missed by Michael Gray, Sutherland's fate is sealed. It's Charlton Athletic who go to the Premier League. The score after extra time, 4-4, and Charlton win. 7-6 on penalties.
Party time in South East London tonight. 